of Oak River Baptist Church, and we welcome you this morning. So let's continue our service this morning as we stand and sing Were You There? Mm -hmm.
John's Gospel, John chapter 20. And I mentioned to you last week, we are looking in the Gospel of John. And as we continue talking about events and eyewitnesses to the resurrected Christ, today we turn our focus toward Mary Magdalene. And so I invite you to follow along in your Bible as we read together the scripture today. John chapter 20, beginning at verse 11, and we'll read through verse 18. John chapter 20, verse 11. But Mary was standing outside the tomb weeping. And so as she wept, she stooped and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head, one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had been lying. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. And when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Verse 16, Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Stop clinging to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I ascend to my Father, and your Father, and my God, and your God. Mary Magdalene came, announcing to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. May God bless the reading of this word today. I'm excited to share with you this message in just a few moments about the reality of grief and as we look at the resurrection from Mary's point of view. Uh, we want to have a prayer time together today. I do want to ask you to be praying for Frank Brasington. I got word this morning uh, that Frank had a fall very late Friday night, and his daughter shared with me that, uh, that, that it took him a little while to be able to call for help, and so he was able to finally get to his phone at home around 4 yesterday afternoon to call for help. Uh, they took him to Lexington, and so far, Michelle says, uh, really the only, only thing they're treating him for is dehydration, but Frank is in Lexington Hospital. Um, he asked for right now that there be no visitors, but I know he will appreciate your prayers, so please pray for him. And um, I know we have other needs in the life of our church family, too, and your needs as well. And so I invite you to bow with me as we spend a few moments praying together. Uh, following the prayer time, we'll have a time of prayer and meditation and then the message from John chapter 20 today. So would you bow with me, please, as we pray together? And Lord, we are grateful for this day. Lord, we thank you for your presence here. We thank you for the account of the resurrection that we've read about from John's Gospel, chapter 20. Father, I thank you today for the various viewpoints of those who encountered the resurrected Lord. Father, we thank you for the testimony of Peter and John, as John has recorded in his Gospel, which we've read together. I thank you, Lord, for the testimony of Mary Magdalene and the other women who saw the resurrected Christ. And Father, their, their account of this event is true and genuine. And Lord, today we celebrate as the body of Christ also the glorious resurrection of our Lord. And we're grateful today, Father, that the resurrection is true and real in our lives. And so today, Lord, as we worship you, I pray that you draw near to us as we draw near to you. Father, we lay before you today our needs, our worries, our burdens, our cares, our concerns. Lord, we today bring before you, Frank, and thank you, Lord, that he was able to get the help he needed yesterday afternoon. We pray as he's being treated in Lexington Hospital, Lord, I pray that you would restore good health and strength to him. Father, today we're mindful of many needs, uh, both needs of our own, needs of our neighbors, needs of our family members, Lord, of co-workers. And today we bring these before you. And, and like Mary, Lord, today we know.
know that you too have spoken our name just as you spoke to Mary uh, that morning at the tomb. Lord, today we know that you've spoken to us, and may we respond uh, with, with ears of faith and with hearing of faith to listen and obey. And Father, as we bow for a moment of prayer and meditation before you now, would you speak to our hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. And everybody say again. Amen. Uh, let me just highlight 
a couple of verses that will be our focus. If you notice verse 11, the text tells us that Mary was standing outside the tomb. And uh, while some of the other gospel writers do give us a hint of Mary's grief, it is John's point of view of Mary where we, where we really see and understand what she was doing. And John tells us in verse 11 that she was outside the tomb weeping, and so John tells us as she wept. And so John, we must give John credit for his descriptive language. We must give John credit for giving us this point of view of this narrative that it was Mary who was, without a doubt, filled with grief, Mary Magdalene, and surely the others present that day. But John calls out for us Mary Magdalene and her grief. And so I'd like to tell you just a couple of things about grief today that we can learn from Mary. One, one thing I want us to, to know about grief, and if you've been there, I know that, that many of you, if not all of you, have been there in times of grief in your life. And, and all of us can understand, and we see this in Scripture as well, that, that grief can cloud reality, right? Grief, when our hearts are filled with grief and sorrow and our minds are weighed down with the mental impacts of grief, we might find ourselves like Mary, often with our eyes filled with the heaviness and the weight of Tears, we might, like Mary, understand first today that grief clouds reality, that grief puts us in an emotional state, even a, a mental state where we may not even feel as if we're able to get grounded. We may feel as if we're not able to see clearly, and grief does that. It clouds reality. This isn't explicitly stated in the text, but if you notice in verse 11, it seems that, that Mary has uh, missed what Peter and John just saw. Now, if we look back at John chapter 20, verse 1, we see that it was Mary who came very early to the tomb while it was still dark. And we understand that she ran and she comes to Peter and John. And so we looked last week, Peter and John went in the tomb and then they run back to tell the others. And so there seems to be that, that Mary has possibly missed an encounter with Peter and John, not quite understanding what Peter and John had just witnessed. And so I think it's worth noting in the text that, that it could be that Mary... Um, that, that Peter and John went ahead, that Mary missed seeing them, and therefore she missed the message that Christ was alive and risen. And so Mary, in verse 11, she really doesn't have the full context of the resurrection. She is missing at this point in time an important piece of the story. And so therefore, her reality is somewhat clouded as she doesn't yet know what Peter and John already know. And, and grief does that to us, doesn't it? Grief clouds our reality because we, we don't have the full view. We don't have the full picture. We don't, we don't see as God sees. And, and yet one day we know that God will bring a, a pure healing to all of our grief, and yet we don't have the entire view that God has. Mary did not have the entire view, and so grief does cloud our reality. Notice second in verse 11, and I don't know if you get this sense in the scripture, but I want you to, to get this sense of what Mary is going through as John points out to us that she is actively weeping outside of the tomb. And so we know that, that her eyes are likely filled with tears. And, and so we know just naturally we can conclude that grief not only clouds reality, but grief also blurs vision. For Mary, this was very literal, literal as she wept and as her eyes were likely filled with tears. And grief does that for us. It blurs our 
vision. Again, we are not able to see the story as God sees it because grief naturally blurs our vision. Now, we need to understand this about Mary Magdalene. That this is not the first time her reality had been clouded. This was not the first occasion that her vision was blurry. If I could just read for you uh, from Luke's gospel about Mary, uh, this is one thing we do know about Mary Magdalene, and uh, by the way, she uh, has the name Mary Magdalene, scholars say, because uh, Mary is likely from a place called Magdala, and this is on the northwest portion of the Sea of Galilee. If you've never taken an opportunity to, to, to learn and research about Magdala, I, if I could give you a homework assignment today, it would be to go home and, and do some Googling and researching about this town called Magdala, where uh, about 25 years ago they discovered uh, perhaps the original synagogue there, uh, where some of the miracles took place. They have discovered, archaeologists have discovered some of the original stone flooring where uh, they believe some of the encounters took place that we read about in the gospel. And so Luke's gospel captures this about Mary for us. Luke chapter 8, verses 1 through 3. Soon afterwards, Jesus began going around from one city and village to another, proclaiming and preaching the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him. Now verse 2, listen. And also some women who had been healed of evil spirits and sicknesses, Mary, who was called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out. And so we don't... We don't, we're not privy to these details of what Mary experienced, of what she encountered, but we do know that she had been delivered from demon possession, and Luke calls out specifically uh, she'd been delivered from seven demons. Now, Scripture doesn't tell us exactly what Mary went through, but as we find her weeping at the tomb, surely... This is not the first time her vision had been blurred and not the first time her reality had been clouded. This we know about uh, demon possession from other places of Scripture. We know that it involves slavery to an evil spirit. Uh, I don't know if you remember when we had Beth Greer here a couple of years ago. Beth told us a powerful story about her mission work in Africa and how there were some very super natural things that, that she and her team had encountered surrounding the presence of evil. And so uh, we know that this involved, perhaps for Mary Magdalene, uh, slavery to an evil spirit. This involved darkness and torment and affliction. This involved a state of misery, of sorrow, being lonely, heartsick, depressed, uh, shameful, fearful, filled with misery, restlessness, and joylessness. And so we know uh, that for Mary here at the tomb, we know that there had to be so much going on in our heart and in our life as the same Jesus who miraculously delivered her sometime earlier as now she encounters his death, we, we know from John's Gospel uh, that she was there at the cross, that she saw firsthand uh, him take his last breath, we know. And so here she is at the tomb. And yet in the midst of this, in the midst of all that Mary is facing about grief, we understand that, that the Lord Jesus was very real to her. I'd like to tell you about um, a writer by the name of Lisa Apello, and uh, Lisa lost her husband unexpectedly, and I know many in this congregation, you have gone through the loss of a spouse, and you understand firsthand what it is to deal with this immeasurable amount of grief. And so Lisa Apello has written 
about grief, and she talks about the unexpected loss of her husband, and she talks about, she writes, I never knew a person could cry so many tears. Some of you have been there. She writes, I never knew a person could cry so many tears for so many months. And yet she writes, and we must keep this in mind about Mary Magdalene and, and the grief that she faces. Uh, Lisa Apello writes that God who created us also created our emotions in his flawless design. And he has given to us the unique gift of emotional tears. Now, she tells us, Lisa Apello tells us that tears help us release stress. So interestingly enough, she says this, uh, tears that come from dust or cutting an onion are 98% water. But she writes, emotional tears are filled with stress hormones and toxins. She says the trauma, pain, changes, and fear that come in grief are enormously stressful, and yet God, in his wisdom, created us with an outlet to cry out that grief. Tears, she says, help calm us. They help soften the pain. And so without a doubt, tears for Mary Magdalene, tears that you have cried, are without a doubt God's way to help us soften the pain. So we think about this. Now, notice later it is Jesus who says to Mary in verse 16, and we understand that surely Jesus and Mary locked eyes in just a few moments after what we've read in verse 11. And I remind you today, like Mary, the same Jesus who saw her tears is the same Jesus that sees your tears. The same Jesus that saw the tears streaming down the cheeks of Mary Magdalene is the same Jesus who notices every tear that you cry. In fact, Psalm 56 verse 8, if you'd like to make a note of that, tells us, the psalmist says, you keep track of all of my sorrows. You have collected all of my tears in your bottle. You have recorded every one in your book. And so if I've ever had an occasion to counsel somebody that is filled with grief, and if I've ever been in a situation counseling somebody who has tears streaming down, their face. I'm careful to let them know. Psalm 56 verse 8 reminds us that God sees every tear that we cry. Amen? That God is aware of every sorrow that our heart bears so much that the scripture says that he bottles our tears. Every single one. Notice the same Jesus who saw Mary cry these tears of grief is the same Jesus who he himself wept. Do you remember John 11, verse 35? The shortest verse in the Bible is two words. Does anybody want to say for us today the shortest verse in the Bible? Somebody want to blurt that out? Jesus wept. Almost, I heard a lot of folks say that. Jesus wept. And so don't miss the power of what we see here at the tomb with Mary Magdalene and Jesus, the same Jesus, perhaps just um, several weeks earlier, who had tears perhaps rolling down his cheek, as John tells us Jesus wept, is the same Jesus that saw these tears that Mary cried. And so God also promises to us Today, that he will one day turn our tears to joy. Psalm 126, verses 5 through 6. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. Friend, can I tell you today, your tears are not the end of the story. 
Your tears are not the final chapter. And along with the tears, make sure that you assure yourself that, that sorrow will not always come because we know that God is a restoring God. God is a healing God. We know that God is a God who brings beauty out of ashes and gladness for grief. Can I tell you today that, that your tears need no apology? And so we see Mary here at the tomb weeping and grieving and hurting and sorrowful. And if you look at verse 10, I, I remind you today that in the midst of our grief, it is God who provides strength for us. Look at verse 15. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she says to him. It is in this moment that, that God provides a supernatural strength for her. And yet her vision and her uh, perspective are still somewhat clouded as she thinks this is the gardener. And yet it is Jesus who speaks to her saying, why are you weeping? God provides strength in the midst of our grief. Notice verse, um, actually verse 15, if you notice this miraculous um, show of strength that Mary gives. I, I confess, I never thought of this verse in the perspective that I've seen it this week, but verse 15, she says, Sir, if you would carry him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. This phrase, Mary, really indicating that she's prepared to take the body. She's prepared to handle the remaining um, aspects of the burial. If you notice this amazing strength that Mary has, she is ready to face this daunting task of handling the body of her Lord. And God does that in the midst of our grief. Somehow he provides strength for us to sit at the graveside of somebody we love and bury them with dignity and with courage and with hope. Somehow God provides the strength for us to sit by the bedside of, of somebody we love and hold their hand in their final moments. Somehow God provides the miraculous strength for us to get up on the day after that dreadful funeral, that dreadful time of grief, and yet somehow God provides the strength for us as he did for Mary, who in verse 15 was ready and willing to face the task of the remaining things that needed to be done for the body of Jesus. And yet verse 18, somehow God in the midst of our grief provides clarity. We saw her in verse 11, weeping and grieving. We understand that her vision and her reality were clouded, understanding that her heart was weighted down with emotion. And yet verse 18, look at the clarity that God has given her. Verse 18, Mary Magdalene came announcing to the disciples, I have seen the Lord and that he has said these things to her. Somehow God provides clarity in our grief. And for Mary, he did just that. And, and if we could see two things in common between Peter that we saw last week and Mary we saw this week, they are changed people after seeing the resurrected Christ. That is what the resurrection does for us. It changes our perspective and provides clarity. And so as we close today, I, I leave you with two uh, biblical perspectives of how to handle grief. Uh, these two passages certainly would not be possible without the resurrection. If Jesus had never risen from the dead, we would never be able to find strength in these two passages that help us know how to grieve. First, 
How is a Christian to grieve? The Bible tells us that we are to grieve in hope. 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 13 through 14. Um, at every graveside service, I, I read this passage, and Paul writes, But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning those which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so... Uh, all, those also who sleep in Jesus, God will bring with him. And so the scripture tells us because of the resurrection of Jesus, when we grieve, we grieve in hope. Certainly it is okay to grieve. Certainly grieving is an emotion that God has equipped us with. It is okay for those tears to come. But yet the scripture reminds us because of the resurrection of Jesus, we grieve as those who have great hope. And then second today, how is a Christian to grieve? We are to grieve in victory. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 54 through 55 reminds us again of the promise of hope through the resurrection of Jesus. And this is why it is so important that we not stop praying for our lost loved ones to come to faith in Christ. This is why it is so important that we not stop planting seeds of the gospel because we want our loved ones to have this hope that Jesus came to give us. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 54 and 55. So when this incorruptible shall be put on Excuse me, or when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? I pray today that God would give you the clarity that he gave to Mary Magdalene in her grief. I pray today, like Mary, you know, I wonder as she wept, if she thought back to that time, that point in time when Jesus set her free from the seven devils that possessed her. I wonder as she was weeping, if she thought back to the moment that Jesus gave her true freedom for all eternity. And, and he does it again for her as we see this assurance in verse 18. I pray today that God would give you clarity. I pray today in the midst of any grief that you might be facing that God would give you strength. I pray today that God would give you hope and victory. And I pray that, that when the moment of grief comes for all of us, and it is sure to come again, I pray today that, that these words of hope and victory would permeate your mind your heart, your emotions, to know that it is God who is with us in the midst of grief. Amen? That it is God who is with us to bottle our tears and wipe our tears and walk with us through every moment of sorrow we face. And because of the resurrection of Jesus, we know that one day He will wipe every tear from our eye. Amen? That He will take every sorrow that we have ever gone through and bring ultimate and complete healing for all eternity. What a gift of the resurrection we have to celebrate today as we know that grief is real. And yet we know like Mary, the power of God is also real in our life to sustain us and to get us through every moment of grief. I pray that he would do that for you today. Would you bow with me? As we pray together. Father, today we are grateful for tears. Um, we are grateful today for the emotions, for the ability that you give us to grieve. And Lord, we're also grateful to know, like Mary, you are with us in our grief. Lord, you are with us in our sorrow. And yet, Lord, like Mary, we have the ability through Jesus Christ to stand in the Shadows and the reality of a tomb that is empty, and to stand in the shadows and the reality of a Savior who has conquered death 
and conquered the grave, and a Savior who stands with us in the midst of grief, at our moment of grief. And like Lord Jesus, you spoke to Mary, we're grateful today that we can hear your words of comfort and assurance and of hope and, uh, Lord, of the reality of the resurrection. And I pray today that you give us the strength to hold on to this until Jesus comes again. And I pray as we sing together this next hymn in the garden, Lord, remind us today that you do walk with us and you talk with us and you tell us that we are your own. I pray today for any who are grieving, Lord, would you strengthen them. Uh, we pray in Jesus' name, and everybody said together, amen. Would you stand with me as we sing this closing hymn in the garden? Let's stand together as we sing.